Ara, we've had an unhappy birthday lately in the South East uh, with the 10th anniversary of the closure of the Ross Lair to Waterford train route occurring within the last few weeks, putting an end to a rail link that joined towns across South Wexford to Waterford City, as well as supplying heavy rail infrastructure to two major ports, Bellevue and, and Ross Lair Europort. Since the closure of the line, advocates for its reopening have kept a close eye on the fate of the Barrow Bridge, which is a 650 metre span that links County Kilkenny and County Wexford over the River Barrow. A central span of that bridge can open to allow shipping traffic to access New Ross, and keeping the mechanism of that bridge functioning and in good order has always been seen as essential if this line is ever to be brought back into active use. Uh, Minister, I was dismayed recently to receive a letter sent by the NTA to South East on Track Group. The letter states as follows. The Barrow Bridge is to be maintained in the open position, allowing marine traffic to traverse unencumbered, reflecting the fact that as there is no railway service on the line, it is entirely appropriate that right-of-way be given to the marine traffic. On further questioning from the South East on Track Group, the NTA confirmed that the agreed arrangements in respect to the, of the closed line uh, the close, uh, Waterford to Ross Lair line uh, do not include weed spraying or vegetation treatment programme. This uh, was previously done on an annual basis and so can't have been a huge uh, draw on the CIE's resources. Minister, this sounds very much to me like a plan to abandon the line. Additional to this, there have been strong indications from the CEO of Wexford County Council that his preferred use of the rail line is for it to be converted to a greenway. Minister, our Waterford Greenway is a best-in-class exemplar for how a greenway should be designed and delivered, and it has been a huge boost for our local economy in Waterford City, Dungarvan and Kilmac Thomas. However, I am not of a view that greenways should supplant strategic heavy rail infrastructure, particularly of this level of importance. I have noted with interest your recent emphasis on the future importance of rail freight. This is particularly pertinent in the case of the Ross Lair Line. Taken in its, in it, in its entirety, Potentially from Foynes to Rosslare Europort, this line links two Tier 2 ports, Rosslare and Bellevue, and a Tier 1 port in Foynes, with the major population centres of Waterford, Limerick and Clonmel. This strategic link will only become more important in the context of Brexit, with increased uh, shipping traffic likely to emanate directly from Europe, rather than taking the land bridge route across the UK. Both Bellevue and Foynes should be also considered in the longer term as sites suitable for the development of offshore wind technology. Both are deep water ports with access to development land and heavy rail infrastructure. It's also worth noting, and I stand open to correction on this, that Ross Lair is the only point to my knowledge, other than through the Phoenix Park Tunnel, that the Houston and the Connolly lines converge. In terms of the potential for the line to operate as a commuter service, I've previously been vocal on the need for common sense timetabling changes that would cater to population centres in South Tipperary, allowing residents of Carrick, Clonmel, Tipperary and Care to commute either to Waterford or to Limerick for work or study. I think the same logic applies to South Wexford, with towns like Bridgetown and Wellington Bridge standing to benefit significantly if their local train line terminated at a newly built integrated transport hub in Waterford City. Finally, Minister, I note as well the commitment in the programme for government to examine the development of national tourism trails linking our ferry ports and rail network. A reopened Ross Lair to Waterford line would allow for the development of a sail, rail and trail offering, which would allow the, our European tourists to see our green way, the green way, if I can coin a phrase. So, Minister, I would request that you immediately review the NTA's new maintenance agreement with Erin Road Erin and revert it to pre-September 2020 status so that the line remains a viable piece of infrastructure pending further review. Margaret, Margaret. Thank you very much indeed. I would thank the Deputy for the opportunity to address this issue in the House this evening. As most members are aware, mm. rail services on this particular line ceased in 2010 under an agreement made between the National Transport Authority and Erin O'Dearn, and a number of improvements were made to bus services at the time to ensure continued public transport connectivity. I have no doubt some people are fearful that the decision to maintain the bar bridge in the open position means a point of no return as to whether services might ever return again on this closed line. Equally, I do not want to give false hope with regard to the imminent return of services. The decision to maintain the bridge in an open position is a pragmatic one based on the fact that the line has now been closed for 10 years. But while the line has been closed, the port of New Ross remains open and the position of the bridge reflects the need to ensure easy navigational access to the port. 
In fact, I'm afraid that up until recently there was a requirement for four full-time air and return staff to be on site so as to open the bridge to allow ships sail to and from the port. A very practical level, I think, that probably strikes, strikes most people as a little odd, to say the least. So, ten years on from the decision to close the line, a number of revised arrangements have been agreed between the National Transport Authority and Air and in relation to the line. These revised arrangements include obligations to review level crossing surfaces each year, reviewing the boundary protection along the line each year, and conduct bridge inspections every two years in line with Air and Rodairn's technical standards. In addition, the agreement between the NTA and Air and Rodairn requires a general review of the line to be undertaken on an annual basis. The purpose of the review is to assess the level of the overall condition of the line so as to be able to provide a current status assessment of the infrastructure each year. The revised arrangements also provide that the Barrow Bridge be maintained in an open position, and this means that the previous requirement to have a four full-time staff manning a bridge with, service, with no services is removed. Furthermore, the design of the mechanism is such that it can easily be reversed if rail services do resume at some point in the future. So at a practical and pragmatic level, I hope the Deputy can understand the rationale behind the decision to maintain the bridge in an open position. At a broader level, I have no doubt the Deputy's own wish to see rail services running again on this line, and I hope he can see that this decision does not fundamentally run counter to that at some point in the future, if it were ever to be decided. I also know that there, that, that there are those who would like to develop the route as a greenway and build upon the work already undertaken or underway in the South East to create a real cluster of act, attractive greenways spanning right across the region. I trust this clarifies the position with regard to the Barrow Bridge. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Ara. I, it, I'm afraid it, it does feel like a point of no return, and as I said, it's something that's been closely monitored by people with an interest in this route over the years. Um, it feels a little like a managed decline, and I do also have that worry that we'll end up tearing out uh, what's uh, an excellent and strategic piece of infrastructure. Uh, with a view to developing a greenway on it. We already have a Eurovelo route, which has been developed by Wexford County Council, which runs from um, Rosslair Europort and runs as far as the Ballyhack uh, ferry, which transports then people over onto passage into Waterford. And in my view, it would be much better use of resources to develop that Eurovelo route to a higher standard and then also to develop a corridor from passage east into Waterford City, which would also be an important commuting corridor along the Dunmore Road. Um, there has been significant funding allocated for the design phase of this greenway, some 58,000 if I'm correct. Um, I would be open to the concept of side-by-side, -side, but certainly the Barrow, the Barrow Bridge would make side-by-side -side development of a greenway route um, very, very difficult. Um, and I think we should be mindful when we think about rail infrastructure in general, and I, I know that you are very conscious of this as well, that while there is a significant cost to upgrading and maintaining this route, it is certainly a, a fraction of what it would cost to build this type of infrastructure from scratch. And so uh, aiming towards a managed decline of infrastructure is not where I think we should be going. We know that heavy rail routes as, such as this can discharge a freight, capacity, also a commuter capacity. We know it can be moved to low emissions or zero emissions, relatively easy in comparison to haulier traffic. And so I would be very anxious that within, the, within a short to medium term, we should have a review of this route and have a look to see how we can make this actually practically uh, viable for people, not just commuters, but also the freight traffic and also the tourist traffic that, that will be emanating from Rosslare Airport. Thank you, Deputy. As it happens, I, I had a meeting with Air Nordern with Irish Rail last week and actually raised specifically the issue of the future of Rosslare uh, Port because uh, it is on, in, under the ownership of Irish Rail and CIE. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also, uh, in my, I was raising it in the context of a wider review that Air Nordern are just committing now on the future of rail freight in this country. And I believe that there's real opportunity for expansion of rail freight. There's only 2% of freight at the moment is carried on rail. And that's a, a fraction, a small fraction of what the average is across Europe. And while some argue that the distances here are not, not long enough, I see the rest of Europe saying they want to switch to even greater volumes of freight traffic. And with new te technology coming, uh, the possibility of, of rail freight revived is a very real prospect. 
and our other uh, use of other rail lines for commuting or tourism or other purposes, as you say. So I think your instincts are right not to, not to we should not be writing off the possible uh, return to la of lines, which are currently completely underutilised, or uh, this line closed effectively for the last 10 years. There are particular difficulties in Rosselaire because it is a roll-on, roll-off port. Uh, I, what I asked Aaron Roder in, in the discussions I had with him is, is that if you're thinking long-term, are the possibilities to vary that, adopt that, adopt the, develop the port? Uh, I, I think we we'll have to wait and see. I think there are difficulties in that, but we'll have to wait and see what their review of, of the uh, freight uh, future is in that, in that report. And it, it also, I suppose, influenced the fact that by the Waterford port does have that lift-on, lift-off facilities on Bellevue and has rail freight capabilities. So uh, that would influence the, the, uh, the, the uh, decision. Um, but... Uh, I, I think you're, this, this issue of this line is, I suppose, similar in a sense to the discussion on the Western Rail Corridor uh, in terms of the question of whether one has a greenway or whether has a rail keeps it as, as a rail asset. Uh, and what you're suggesting there is that it is possible potentially to have both. I wouldn't disagree with. I think we will have to make a, a decision in that regard within the context of a wider network review. It's not just this section of the line. It's seeing how we can integrate networks is what I hope to do, and I commit to doing uh, further work with you and other deputies in the Waterford Wexford region to look at what the possibilities might be. Uh,